It's very fortunate, yes. I, I, I mean, I've, I've been uh, around for as long as a vintage car now, I think I, I qualify to be. But uh, I, I've eased up on the amount of work I want to do. What are you? Because I've followed you through so many elements of your career, which I, all of which I love. Musical theatre is a big passion of mine. I've seen you many times on stage and you blow us away with that. Comedically, you're brilliant. And of course, under all that, you're an actor. What are you? I think an actor, basically, uh, and and I, I've always been happy, uh, happier acting and and playing a real character. So that by, by creating Frank Spencer, I and mean, he was people will hear as soon as I laugh, they'll go, oh, there's his laugh, and I go, <laughs> oh yeah, I do have that sort of laugh. It's a bit a bit strange. Um, and then Phantom was something that the music gave me. I just heard Andrew Lloyd Webber's music, and and it it hit some chord inside me and, and made the hair stand up on the back of my head and I I found the character I mean it, within a, a, a minute or so the basis of that character and and I, gosh I wish it always happened like that I suppose most actors do um, so and then Barnum I suppose the, these things have been big things in my life but they're all very very different and I never thought I'd actually end up as a as a singer and having sold 22 million copies of an album like the phantom i mean it's just not something you really ever think you're going to do when you've been doing all betty for a few years <laughs> so um and then i got a concert career so i was able to go out and tell stories on my own as as me and I, again i never thought i'd be able to do that but they're all stories about what has happened on the on the journey and I have fun doing that but um, just slowed up now not doing quite as much. I know you take what you do very seriously but it's so rare in somebody's career to have two big hits for two very different things. Oh, yeah. Do you regard yourself as very blessed in that way? Oh, uh, Unbelievably so yes unbelievably so is that people say oh you know I mean I've had my misses as well I can tell you and uh, when you get those they're not too pleasant but uh, the, 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 the hits mean obviously. I mean, when you first hear something you've done on the radio, if they play something you've sung, you go, that's me, that's me. I mean, you, you're, you're just like a child at a toy shop. And I don't think that, I can't think that would ever change for someone like Sinatra. And old, uh, I mean, he, I'm sure he got excited when he heard himself on the radio. It's, it's, it's a thrill. When you see Frank on the TV now or you hear that big song from Phantom on the radio, which I still play because we always go back to the original cast recording with any show, so you're played around the world. Do you see that as you now or is that almost a different person? No, I mean, it's all, it's all been part of my, my, you know, the person that I am now. Uh, you know, we, we just develop. And, and so when I look back, I, I watch it with my grandchildren and we sit there and laugh together because I always... The characters are always him. It's not me. It's I'm playing him. I'm playing someone else. So and I go look at him. I'll go to the children. Just look at him. What he's doing. And I and I'll I'll laugh rather. Um, I, I suppose. Um, immodestly at myself <laughs> <laughs> when you look at phantom what what really fascinates me about that is it's still in the west end shows come and go even the biggest come and go they never last as long as phantom no. do you think there was a certain alchemy with that show between andrew's writing your performance and sarah's performance because that's so rare absolutely i think every single person i've, I've always said this that we with Gillian lynn as the choreographer um, with Maria Bjornsson, the, the designer, with Hal Prince, the director, with Andrew's music and with Sarah's performance, uh, everything, every element gelled. And of course, that doesn't always happen because otherwise we'd have a lot, a lot more of these shows running forever and ever. But it was just, uh, you, uh, we, I think we even felt something extraordinary in rehearsal. And not that we were going to get the reviews we got and, and it would run as long as it did, but we certainly didn't feel... I mean, it was off the wall for, for me to play a character like that. I mean, it was laughed at in the West End most probably. Thank goodness there wasn't much internet then and I couldn't read about it. <laughs> but the, the abuse I must have been getting saying, oh, who does he think he is doing that? So uh, luckily I was in a bit of a, a bubble and just the rehearsal rooms and I worked at it and we did it and locked ourselves away and and reap the rewards from the from the result 
you've got such pathos to your voice and such emotion with it. You're one of the few voices that make me cry. Are you aware of that when you're doing it? Because it's such an emotional performance. The words mean so much to me when I sing them. Uh, if I'm in a play and my mother dies or something, my, I immediately I'm related to my own life. And, and I'm uh, half Irish, so my grandmother was always singing me songs about little you know, boys who've gone to heaven with the angels far above. And I, I mean, I spent my childhood crying my eyes out on a Friday night listening to the family <laughs> sitting around singing Irish fun. folk songs. And that was good fun, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it was, otherwise it was outside and the war was just finishing. So, uh, you know, we did have a good time <laughs> but I think I grew up as a pretty sensitive soul yeah and I, I don't regret that at all because when I do sing a song it can mean it means what it meant to me when I was growing up and singing songs you know when I got my first girlfriend when I was about eight I was I was um, you know I'd, I'd sing I'd listen to these songs uh, sweet sweet memories you gave me I mean with the, with the, the, maybe they're historic <laughs> no one will know what I'm talking about now but 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 you you'd sit there and think of this girl you know in kindergarten with you <laughs> <laughs> oh dear my case comes up next week <laughs> <laughs> I sound like an old fart but are they writing them like they used to because they're not lasting as long now there's a couple of exceptions to that rule Lemmy and Phantom, which seems to be here forever. Could we tempt you back with anything? I'm sure if it was different enough, it's just you want to do something that is different. If you've done shows that, again, we've been lucky enough to run for a long uh, period of time, you, you don't want to do the same thing again. So it would have to be... It would have to be a very, very different character and something that would keep you amused eight shows a week and intrigued so that you could hold the audience. 